Howdy folks. I've been running a bit late, but also um, I just had some issues with OBS. It does some weird stuff sometimes. It confuses me. It seemed to be complaining about um, the IP address being wrong. Um, and then it wouldn't let me change it. So, yeah. Kind of weird, really. Don't quite know what all that was about. A few restarts and it came back, as did the webcam, because that also wasn't coming up for some strange reason. But anyhow, we're up and live. Our frame rate looks okay. Um, perhaps somebody can give me an audio check. And I have tea, so all's good so far. Might need to adjust my um, webcam slightly. I think it might have budged. Every time I reach around to turn my multimeter in, the switch is right at the back for my bench multimeter. Uh, and it's now really difficult to get to because of the way I've arranged everything around it. And I end up whacking my screen and moving it along with the webcam which is a pain Laurie says the audio is fine good we like it that something I need to remind me ding 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 ding, ding. scissors that's for later actually it looks slightly dark here uh, maybe I can angle that around a bit more. No. No. <sighs> right. Okay. Um, so what I could do, maybe turn this around a bit. It's in the wrong position. How is everyone anyhow? Could I help? Um, what have you all been up to? I know I was kind of quiet back end of last week and over the weekend, but we had folks. It was Jubilee weekend here in the UK, which is really weird because it started on a Thursday. Who starts bank holiday on a Thursday? I don't quite understand why the government opted for those days. But anyhow, so it started on Thursday, went through Friday, then we had Saturday, which wasn't a holiday then. Sunday and we were back on Monday so it's kind of odd really but anyhow we had folks down uh, folk in laws so uh, yeah I didn't have a great deal of time I was kind of here on and off um, they've all gone back now um, so I'm back to it I should sort of recap where we are in a minute as well and what we're working on that is if people stop sending me tax that would be nice more tea vicar Right, um, what should we cover first? Um, um, 
what are we working on? Um, <coughs> so I was working on the new version of this this week. Ta -da. This is the. Um, I don't know if we can get a decent view on that, maybe. Mostly. But this is the uh, the DAVI tile, digital audio video tile with the HDMI connector. This is the incorrect one. I was just checking the cabling positions at the moment. So I was working on that this week. Some of you may notice I did post up the new schematic for that. Um, so what I've changed on that now, or so far, is <clears throat> apart from getting the HDMI pin out right, which is always a good idea, is um, the audio side of it has changed. So what's happening now is the, 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 the two jacks, which you can see here actually, it's got two jacks on it. Uh, beep, beep. One will be line out you know, line level, lower voltage signal, uh, with more filtering as well, um, for going into an amplifier of some sort or recording device, whatever you're doing. And then the other one will be an output for a kind of small headphone, you know, milliwatts, uh, low power. I mean, I, I don't think you could drive a speaker properly with that. You might be able to drive a buzzer or something um, in a kind of D-class way. So I've just been changing that around today and reconfiguring that. Um, and I did post up the circuit on Discord, on the Black Ice channel. Uh, and Gatecap was really helpful. Reminded me of some of the things that I um, omitted, which was helpful and useful. So I fixed those now. But we do have two pins left over and I'm not quite sure what we can do with those. The biggest problem here is, if you look where the connectors are, there's no room to add any other connectors. So whatever those extra two GPIOs from the FPGA get used for, um, it won't be output because there's no room for any more there. Um, the best suggestions we've had so far is a couple of buttons or a couple of LEDs. Because um, they're always useful, but uh, they don't necessarily make sense in this case. Um, so any ideas, please let me know here on the stream or down on Discord later. Because um, I've got to get that done. Um, I did want to talk about the battery regulator at some point. Because I've designed the circuit for that. Um, let's do that first, actually. Let me see if I can bring that up. Do, 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 do. And let me just remind you what we're talking about here. So, whilst I open this, so let's just show this first, I guess. Um, here's my keycap viewer. Just change the size of this because this is um, rather rather wide. 
side. Um, I wonder if I can just leave it like that for the moment. So here is the back bridge. Let me give you some perspective. If you remember from last time, what we had was um, Laurie would had found some small like rechargeable battery holders in the form of um, So that is very strange. Seems to have lost a bit temporarily. Ah, it's in here. So These are what they look like, these battery holders. So, from the outside, this is what they look like. Small compact units, and then they have a couple of wires coming out. If you look at the end, there's like a small um, slide switch for power, which is kind of handy. It stops the batteries going flat. And then if you open it up and it slides off like that and you look inside you can see where the rechargeable batteries go. Um, these are standard, I can't remember what the model number of those batteries are, they're very common rechargeable lithium or lithium iron, lithium polymer, lipo size batteries, a bit bigger than AAs. Uh, I don't have any to hand unfortunately. But anyhow, there's a little compartment here, and I was curious what was under that. And I asked uh, Laurie to um, open it up and have a look, because he had one. And I thought, oh, there's an opportunity here, because we might be able to um, do something. So if, I, if I'm careful, I can... Um, Open these up. And you can actually um using a you know prizing tool, you can actually take this bit off and then what you can see inside is very simple. Just like a serial series inline switch. Uh, between the battery compacts and I thought oh maybe we can make a board that goes in there why would we make a board that goes in there well what we want is a board that not only outputs the battery voltage but also outputs 5 volts which we need to drive the logic side of it because there's two voltage inputs effectively to the um, Black Ice NX2 one is the logic voltage which is driven by USB normally or, or 5 volts and then the other is the high power stuff that drives the tiles, uh, which can be, you know, a range of voltages up to about 20 volts in this case. So I thought we could make a little board that fits into there, solders onto the contacts of the battery and the uh, switch. You know, the other way around. So it's the same as the circuit. If you look at the circuit to the... Uh, to the to the right that way um, that way um, that board fits in the top there 
bit difficult if I can't get it focused. If I can get it focused. There we go. You see where the switch is and where the contacts are? Um, so if you look at the board here, there's the switch that solders into place. There's the three contacts. There's a battery contact. Let me get rid of the bottom because that's confusing. So you can just see the top. Turn a few things off here because otherwise you won't be able to see. Um, yeah, so on the top here, then you have the uh, positive contact here, and that corresponds to the top contact on this side, and then the other contact, the minus, uh, that corresponds over on a circuit diagram. Uh, here where it says ground and um, these are the two holes so in other words it matches this little board that fits in that isn't a PCB including the little uh, curves and arch at the bottom um, and then underneath we've got some circuitry so if I turn that back on let's turn the top off turn the bottom back on You can see on the bottom we've got um, uh, a 5 volt regulator, an LDO regulator. We've got um, a couple of capacitors um, to stabilize the supply, and basically a USB um, micro AB connector. And that can poke out of the case. We have to cut slightly into the case at the top here to expose that. And then underneath is also two contacts um, for the uh, voltage out. This one here uh, for the plus voltage, which is switched, and this for the, the ground out. So that way you've got the two supplies. One's USB provided 5 volt, which goes into the logic side of things, and then the higher voltage goes for the tile side of things through a tile connector. And that will probably be an XT. You know, loose wires in here that come out the same side, just like these do, and then that goes to an XT60. We have a uh, holes already made um, and a landing pattern already made on the um, on the Ice Logic Logic Bus that has. Um, an XT30 XT30 um, receptacle Doo -doo. so that's what this board is about um, so I've been working on that that's all pretty much done I'm trying to panelize it um, that's a lot of fun Let me show you what that ends up looking like. There you go. Oh, of course it doesn't pick it up. Oh, very annoying. Why does it go back to there? That's what the panel looks like. Um, right, paneled as is at the moment with V cuts, then that's um, about 18 of them. Oh, great. Why is my webcam frozen? 
Oh, that's so annoying. Right, I'm going to have fun with this. Bear with me. I don't know if it's going to let me do this. Hold your horses. Are we back yet? No, we're not. It's like technical hitch, folks. I don't know why it's decided to do that. It doesn't normally have this problem. Alright, let me try again. We're back. Sorry about that. OBS for you. Oh, uh, Laurie, um, Laurie has reminded me what the numbers are. They're called, that those batteries are 18650s. 18650s. Thanks, Laurie. I missed that earlier. Um, they're fairly common. They're used in loads of stuff. Um, num, 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 num. Right, that's the um, so that's what some panels are. So I'm going to order some of those because I'm doing a PCB order. So I'm going to order some of these. I'm going to order the HDMI tiles, some new ones. Assuming we can decide what to do with those last two DPIOs, and I'm also going to order some breakout blades. That's something Laurie in particular wanted, uh, and that will just have some headers on the blade so you can break it out. It's useful for logic analyzers and all sorts of things, serial, that kind of thing. Um, what else? What else? What else? I notice I've got very few viewers today. Everyone's dumped me. Is there something going on today that I'm unaware of? Um, very few participants. I've also go. I've also redone the proto boards to solve the problems that Laurie discovered. Um, proto boards. Oh, I can't show you one because I've already just used those up. Um, it's the double tile that has proto patch solder pads on it and it also has optionally mix mod and a p-mod socket so it can be used as a p-mod slash mix mod uh, extension as well where is everyone today very quiet um, if you're here let me know because it looks deserted which is strange maybe a twitch issue of course and I'm only going by Twitch, not Discord, because I can't tell who on Discord is watching or not. Um, what else? I was going to, I was probably going to redo the LCD blade if I had a chance. Um, I've changed the templates for both the tile and the blade. I've made some small changes to reduce the sizes slightly. Um, to solve mechanical issues. I've also increased the hole size on the tiles just by 0.1 of a millimeter, just to give a bit more fresh air. What I'm finding is um, with, the, um, with the brass screw fittings, it's quite tight when it goes on. With the plastic ones, they tended to be, the threads seemed to be a bit narrow, more narrow, and it was easier to put the tiles on. But with the brass ones, that's um, much tighter and a bit annoying, so that will improve that just slightly, um, which is good. Um, 
There was some other board stuff I was thinking of doing and I can't for the life of me remember. It might have been another blade. What was the other blade? Laurie, can you remember? What else did I mention I was going to order on this PCB order? battery regulator ones that go in the battery box you can see panelized here um, the proto tile double proto tile with P mods HDMI tile the header blades um, maybe an LCD pad I might order some more um, LED LED blades actually. Um, UART blade isn't designed yet. That's a little way down the road, Laurie. Uh, the motor tile I've got to test before I make the new one. I don't know if that's going to make this jump, but I may have enough of the current tile, albeit a beta. If that works, I might make a couple up and send them out so that you've got something to work with in the meantime. But that needs to change slightly. Um, one of the things that needs to change on that um, will be, so if you look at the current motor tile, I'm not happy with the connections. So the connections at the moment that I've got on there are for the motor. Um, The motors are based on these, which are This is the current ones, and these are screw terminals, which mechanically aren't a good choice. I was still deciding at the time um, what to put on there. Um, and then what I want to do is actually use, I've got hold of some of these if you remember. Oh, this is difficult to open this. Wow. Why is that stuck together? It's really weird. It must be static or something. I'll open the bag. Let's see how pathetic I am this evening. Honestly. I hope I haven't stuck this together with something. I can look like an if I have. Um, these, if you look carefully with these, these have these little buttons on. So you put the wire in the button, sorry, wire in the hole, press the button and it grips onto it. So it's a bit, a bit better when it comes to things like vibration, whereas the screws can come loose. So I need to change those, but I mean functionally, it probably won't change apart from that. So I might be able to make a couple of those up as it's designed because I've got more than one PCB. Although I'm not sure where I put them, I need to dig those out. So I could still make some of those in the meantime. Oh, QSPI flash tile. I do need to do that. I don't know how urgent that is though. That's a fairly simple one to do. I might be able to do that. Um, if I've got time. 
possibly thanks for reminding me about that one Laurie I've still got quite a bit of testing to do I've got to test this mini blade I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit it on though this is really tight this has got the same problem that the um, that the LCD you know the SPI LCD tile has in that it's very very tight and close there's a few components oh, won't focus with it there's a few components that are very close to where the module goes so I'm going to have to adjust those as well I don't know if I'm going to order those straight away anyhow let me know if there's any other PCB stuff you think should go into this batch but my biggest enemy right now is time because I need to get that order completed um, so I want to finish off the HDMI I'm waiting for that um, and then I could quickly panelize the other bits and bobs in order to get some ordered. I mean, the flash time may have to wait, but let's let, let's see because I might be able to knock that one up fairly swiftly because it's dead simple. Um, what other news have I got? Crikey, I've still got. Where is everyone? That's really odd. Um, if you're on Discord, let me know. But Twitch is reporting, I think it's just reporting you, Laurie, which is odd. Very odd. So I need to, um, what else do I need to cover today? Oh, yes, let's do this. This is interesting. So there was a thing. That's why I need my scissors. Let's, let's have a look at this. So this was on Hacker Day the other day. Um, so if you look at the uh, LEDs on the seven segments contrast isn't that good and they were talking about these things and they suggested one thing that you can do is use window tint plastic so I ordered some this is window tint plastic you buy it primarily for uh, motor vehicles and stuff. And it comes basically um, in a roll. Ta da! Like that. And then I think you just. What I'm going to do is just take a bit off my purposes here. I wasn't sure if this was sticky or not or how it attached. It wasn't very clear on the website. So you take a bit of this, ta -da, and it is tinted. And then what you can do is you put it over the seven segment, and it makes it infinitely better. What do you think of that? Brilliant, isn't it? That is so cool. So much better. Um, I haven't worked out quite how I'm going to adhere that to the front. So with, without, with, without, massive difference. This stuff's good. Uh, and I hadn't actually tried that until just then, so I didn't know how well it would work. But I think it's brilliant. So I, I, I will probably provide a bit of that with the... Um, with the seven seg tiles. Um, as I say, what I'm not sure about is how you'd attach it. Normally when you fit things like this, you um, normally have a panel on the box or case or whatever it's in that is tinted to do to provide the same effect. 
Um, but this does equally well. I mean, I guess you could just glue it on. Maybe. Um, I don't know what force it relies on when you do it on a car window. I don't think there's anything that peels off it on the back. I think it just relies on, you know, just relies on sticking on it. Just like I've stuck it to my phone there. Yeah. I don't know what force you call that. Is that, is that the Van de Graaff force or something? I don't know. Does it rely on that? No idea. But anyhow, I mean, what you could do is make it big enough that it goes under the screws. If you look carefully, there are screws for the tile here. So you could screw it down. Top that would hold it in place, possibly. Uh, let me see if I can kill the reflection. I mean, I really want it flush if possible. But anyhow, nice effect. I'll probably include some in the packet because so I've got a whole crap load of it now on that reel. So I can just cut it into small pieces. I think that's really nice. Thank you, Hackaday. Good hack. And I can't remember who it was. Let me, um, I should probably provide a link for that. Hold on. few days ago Hold on. don't know how far I'll have to go back Should you search really shouldn't I but I can't remember what this stuff's called. Well how many posts did they do a day? I don't know how many days ago it was frankly. I don't read this nowhere near as often as I should, by the way. I've missed most of these articles. <laughs> Crikey, must have been further back than I thought. There. Yeah, quick tip, improve seven segment LED visibility there we go uh, so how do I click on this one there we go I'll put it on the um, discord as well for those that are there So you can see all the details about it. I wonder if they glue theirs on. What does he say? I guess if you make it the right size, it might stick on a bit better. And you can get these in different tints. This is the strongest tint. Anyhow, good hint, good hack. We like that stuff. Um, if you remind me, Laurie, when I do an update pack for you on the next pe little PCBs, I'll send you some as well. Um, what else was I going to do? Uh, 
is they going to cover? Oh, my flux finally came. The Great Flux Saga. So I bought some uh, water soluble flux, just a little bit, five litres. And I have real problems with this when I tried it and I haven't been able to sort it out. I've gotten somewhere with it. Um, I think it's slightly more diluted than I need, but it's not a complete loss. But I didn't want to trust using that as is. So I've got some of my favourite stuff. Um, this is from, uh, it's actually from a UK company, Wharton Metals. They make really good solders and flux as well. Um, solder and um, solder paste. And this one's my favourite. I've used this for years. Um, notice this is slightly worn. That one. And this is half a litre, not quite as much. But it will last me a while. So that's good, and I've been using that. That's excellent. It's um, it's an interesting flux. It's very liquid. Um, it's like you'd almost describe it as like a very thin oil. Um, so it's not like the tacky stuff. And I can't use the tacky stuff. Uh, tacky stuff is really good for mending things, but it leaves because it's rosin based. It leaves a horrible um, residue. So you can't really use that for boards because it looks a bit crappy. Um, but that's pretty good. It's light <clears throat> and then you can just wipe it with paper towel. Um, and you can also dilute it with a bit of IPA if you need to. To um, get rid of the uh, bits and bobs. So that's good. That meant that I could... Um, all the stuff that had been lining up that needed flux, which is important. So um, that was good. Right, tea's finished. Let me put it to one side. I've got a whole crap more load of these washers, which we used to build the um, um, Black Ice NXTs. Those. I've ordered some more screws, they haven't come yet, that's all I've got left at the moment. Um, and these are the brass posts that we're using currently. So I've ordered some more bits and bobs in there from Ali. Not sure exactly when those are going to arrive. I've ordered a whole bunch of other bits and bobs, things like some X like an XT30 or two and some cables. So we'll be able to test that, but that's a kind of either later in the month thing or next month thing, depending when those those arrive. Um, everything else has arrived that I need right now. Um, I guess I need to talk about um, what to do next. Oh, I worked on the code last week. Um, and Laurie worked on the QSPI backend. Um, the, oh, before I do that, yes. Uh, this board here is currently a board under test. I've just finished testing it. Um, I think that's uh, iPost's board, all ready to rock and roll. Uh, and then I have this one as well, which is all done. And tested which is uh, Western Longs board um, so I'm gonna get these two out tomorrow get these shipped tomorrow they're all ready to rock and roll um, just a note on that the um, because they come with the proto P mod there are issues with this board but it can be useful for some things so I've included it anyhow but there are some warnings that come with that about how you use it but we can cover those we talked about some of that before um, some of the issues that Laurie found 
Um, and I will obviously replace those with the new versions when they come later in the month. Once I've ordered them. So yeah, they're all ready to rock and roll. They can go out. So that's all the development kits made up now. I've probably got room for one more developer, by the way. I'd like another developer. If anyone's interested, please contact me ASAP uh, and I'll make up one more dev kit. Um, but what I'm thinking about now is moving on to making the first batch of general availability and shipment. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, Black Crab. Yes, so I did some more stuff on the Black Crab side. Um, to handle the QSPI transactions, um, which can be sent from the Python board control file. So we were working on that, Laurie and I, and Laurie did the did the QSPI backend. He finished that off and got that working, which is good. So that's all writing now, and that's pretty much tested. And I refactored Black Crab a little bit. Um, last week, uh, which took a bit longer than it should have done, but um, so that's all going nicely. I've still got to add the read on the QSPI USB QSPI side. That's not um, that's not written and done yet, but that shouldn't be difficult. So we've made some good progress on on that as well. Thanks for Laurie for doing the QSPI work and doing lots of testing on that. Um, so that, that now means we can write from Python um, to the STM32, which in turn writes it over QSPI to a QSPI interface, um, which which Laurie has working. Or, wait a minute, what's it called? QSPI MEM? I can't remember what it was called. QSPI MEM, I think it was called. Um, so that's now working, which is good. Uh, and that's going to be really useful for uh, testing purposes among other things as well so yeah QSPI mem because the original version was spy mem um, which Laurie and Emar put together and that was running on the ULX3 3S I believe and in their case it was running from the uh, ESP32 to the ESP5 that's kind of cool um, and with the uh, the um, with the changes in black crab um, I've now got some standard traits and things and interface well standard traits and functionality um, for the devices that are at the back end of the USB transactions. So I need to get the flash stuff done so that that can talk the same uh, traits as well. So part of the refactoring was extracting those traits. So we've got a standard kind of interface for that. Or API if you like. Uh, Western Long says, uh, I missed the QSPI part. Did you guys get it running? Yes, basically. We've got it writing. It's not reading yet, Western. Um, so we can send stuff from um, using Python, using the Python board support. Um, that will then, that talks in turn over USB to the STM32. The STM32 then buffers that over QSPI to some Amaranth HDL that um, I started writing, but um, Laurie has taken and uh, corrected and got working. So yeah, that will go all the way through now. But it's only writing at the moment, not reading back. Uh, we're still working on the reading and we can do some more of that. My priority next few days, however, is just getting these um, hardware bits and bobs done for the PCB order because I'm already running late on that and I need to get that ordered. Once it's ordered, then I can spend some time on the software as well. 
Um, did you did you see that uh, your board's all made, tested, operational? Um, I finished testing it today. I also did um, iPost. I don't know if you caught that, so I'm going to be shipping that out tomorrow for you, Weston. Exciting! Yeah, the other thing that you missed is I, I used the on Hacker Day. They had this um, tip. Normally, when you have your seven segments, it looks like that. But if it's in a case or something, you normally have a filter on front. But I got the um, you can buy these big rolls of tint film for um, for autos for cars. So I bought some, and it makes a big difference. So that's without and with. So I'm going to include a bit of that as well with these kits. It makes it nice and clear. I haven't worked out quite how to attach it on the front, but pff. yes. So that was the other thing we covered earlier, which is quite nice. Um, the Hackaday link is, I posted as well. Um, I've also designed the, um, in case you missed it, I mean you could look back on the video, but I've de I designed the um, battery regulator that fits inside those battery holders. Um, you can see on the right hand side here, my right hand side, you, yeah, that one. That's a panelised version, which I'm going to order as well. It's part of the PCB order. Uh, I don't know what else we covered before you um, before you arrived. Might have missed something else. I did, we did briefly talk about the motor motor tile. Um, I want to get a couple of those built. Maybe two or three in its current form if it works. And then, um, huh? Okay. so um, although it needs changing, I've got to order them. I don't know if that's going to be ready. If I wait until that's ready before I do this PCB order, it's going to make everything else late. So I may order these ones and then do the motor tile update at the end of this month um, and I'm hoping that the tile board I've got now is good enough for us to actually start doing some testing with but I need to build one up first so um, that's what I'm thinking I'm just trying to avoid adding anything to the PCB order that's gonna hold the PCB order uh, longer than a few days because I've still got to panelize the other bits and bobs in this PCB order. So I'm doing the HDMI tile, the new version of the Proto P mod tile. We're doing the header breakout blade. We do some more LED um, blades. Um, if I have time, I'll also do the uh, SPI LCD blade as well. And that'll probably be enough. And I have to panelize them. I've been playing around with the um, key kit, which is the panelization tool for keycap, which is nice. Uh, Weston says, I've been trying to get my hands on ST Link version 3. Yeah, unfortunately, they are like um, proverbial rocking horse uh, crap. Very difficult to get hold of or find. There was one other possibility. You might. What did we? What was the other one? There was a mini. Um, that doesn't come with all the cables, though. Um, I ordered one of those alley ones, but I've no idea when that's going to arrive. Because that'll be interesting to test. See if that works. Um, does it supposed supposed to support um, SeamSys DAP? which RS probe support so if it does work it'd be a good low cost way of doing it um, 
Yeah. We did have a look, didn't we? Let me just double check the... Um, uh, Yeah, I'm just looking, I can't see any stock of the mod version, mods version, the mini version. Well, yeah, Wind's also saying they've got it, but I wouldn't trust that. Uh, the V3 set, yeah, I can't see any of those. But who are extreme components? Never heard of them. Request a, a quote. Yeah. Wouldn't trust that then. So yeah, that's a bit of a pain, isn't it? There's a mini... Mini IE... What's that bloody mean? Newark. And Newark is like the US version of um, Farnell. They're saying they've got two of these, but this is in the US, so it's probably not much help. I'm just going to post it onto the um, Discord. Have a look at that, um, Western. I don't know. Whether you can order from them or not. That that's not the full version. You don't get all the cables with that. You just get one cable. But I don't know. Yeah, you get the 14 pin cable rather than 14 to 10. But it only shows one end of the cable, so I'm not sure. They seem to have two of those. That's the mini one, so it's not the fully fledged one like a compact version of it but it doesn't have all the cables so I don't know if that's any help at all or whether you'd rather wait I mean I don't know if they've given you any kind of um, idea on availability what's interesting it says delivery in two to four business days UK stock I don't understand Let me show you this. This is really weird. I don't quite understand why they're saying this. But it's very interesting. I mean, if it was UK stock, what happens if I try and order this? Just change the size of this.
I don't know how readable that is. But what they're staying here is, look, two in stock. This is new up, which is the US. I mean, if I added that to my cart, Yeah, it, this has the same support, Western. Uh, Western's asking if it has the extra pin support for the SWO. It's the same support, it just it doesn't come with all the cables and bits and bobs. It's like a compact version. So what happens if you if I put that in my cart? Product free 13 if I was shipped from the UK warehouse. Delivery time is two to four business days. Depending on destination. Let me log in. Uh, hold on, I'm just gonna let's try not to dox myself. Bear with me a sec. Just trying to see if this is it says UK stock, so it should show far now. Well, if you go to the UK. What? <laughs> so it's only available back order. So I don't quite understand that. Why does it show up on Newark as UK stock but not um, Very odd. I'm just having a look to see if I can actually order these. It's giving me really strange choices. You see, it's saying ships from the UK, but it's only giving me choices of American shippers. That doesn't make any sense.
It's all a bit confusing, uh, Western Long. I don't know what to believe. But I can't seem to get any sensible shipping. Even though it knows it's going to ship it from the UK, it's only offering me the American shipping from America options, which is via very expensive couriers or via the US Postal Service. Now, why would I use the US Postal Service to send something to me in the UK from Farndle in the warehouse in the UK? It doesn't make any sense at all. So, otherwise I'd ordered them. For anyone else that needs one. This isn't making much sense. But it's not letting me choose any sensible shipping. UPS priority. Six days. <laughs> what? See, that's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. A FedEx economy. $135. They want to charge me sh for shipping. It's <laughs> ridiculous. Honestly. What planet are these people on? If I click UPS international priority. USPS is twenty is thirty dollars. <laughs> Why would they use United States Postal Service to send it from the UK to the UK with DHL? Forty dollars. That's South and Central America only. US Priority International. UPS. Oh my god. FedEx wanna charge me hundred and fifty two dollars ninety. Oh my god, that's insane. Um, is I post? Uh, no, he's not online. I was going to say he could order from Newark in the States. Maybe you might get a sensible shipping um, price. It's madness. So, uh, yes. No, I'm going to um, back out of this purchase, <laughs> strangely. It doesn't make any sense. Delivery, two to four business days. UK stock, it says in brackets. So why isn't it working that out? And it's got a little red warning triangle telling me that this will ship from the UK warehouse. Won't it? What happens if we go to the UK website? No, it just says there's no stock. It's just totally insane. It's really messed up. They're talking about a lead time of 358 days on the ST-Link V3 set. That's freaking madness. That's like a year. Unbelievable. I don't understand what they're saying. But what's really confusing is why they think it's in stock, but yet the UK or European branches don't show it as stock. It's pretty messed up. So I don't know what's going on there. Let me take this out of my basket because it's pointless having that in. Um, delete. So I don't know. Let's 
not really very helpful. But everyone else is showing zero stock as far as I can see, apart from Newark. It's all very strange. Well, wind source are saying it, but the pricing is ridiculous, so it can't be legit. Wind source get listed for all sorts of things, but they don't actually have them. I mean, if I click on the wind source, Yeah, they want $132 for it, rubbish. I don't believe that, that's nonsense. I do not believe it. Not for one moment. Yeah, it's a bit annoying, isn't it? I mean, you, you could possibly go with something like a J-Link. I don't know how much J-Links are. Um, I think far now to a J-Link board. I'm just thinking what the alternatives are. Um, Dreaming. Um, how much is J-Link? There is a lower cost J-Link board. This one, uh, but that's not available either. It's like an educational um, version of J-Link. Wonder if um, J-Link Mini. That looks reasonably priced. Far now I'll have some of those. Not seen the Mini before. Sorry, we couldn't find the page you were looking for. Well, that's really helpful. That says it's no longer stocked. Oh, that's a different one. Uh, 
That's really weird. I don't quite know what's going on there. Why do they list it here but not there? Uh huh. Oh, really unhelpful. Well, that's not right. Digi key. Don't have any stock. Don't have any stock. Don't have any stock. Nobody has any stock. Sorry, the whole world's broken right now. Damn it. Um. Program, wasn't it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was just going to look and check what else they support. Oh, wow, this is fast. Not. going on here looks like docs.rs has got some issues and I need some sugar whilst I'm waiting my supper was very light so I didn't have time to do anything proper all I managed to get today was a sandwich Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can use your ST Link clone in the meantime. What's up with Duck RS? Wow. Um, let's have a look on GitHub. does it say connect to a DAP link ST link or J link is DAP link just a generic Or do they mean anything that supports that link? Because I mean, I think that thing I ordered from uh, Ali should support that link. What happens if we search for this? Yeah, we did this last time round, didn't we? I don't know why these are coming up. They don't support DAP link. That one might do. Particle. Particle. Oh. 
particle. Now what particle might be um, like one of these little um, dev boards. So what they're saying here, development kit, program or JTAG, SWD for particle mesh boards, yeah. So does this support DAP? Is designed for supports the open source CMAS CMIS DAP protocol specification for DAP link firmware developed by ARM. Maybe you could use that. What size is that connector? Oh, that's it. That's the entire data sheet. What? I don't know what size that is. I don't know. If that's a 1.27 pitch, if it is, that might work as is. But it's not exactly extensive documentation, is it? <sighs> They've got 154 of those in stock. How much are they? 18 pounds. You can have a look at that, see if it's available in the Belgium. Um, version of Farnell. I've no idea if it works or not, but it says it supports Seamsys DAP, so it might work. I don't know. I don't know if it has the SWO. The trouble is, the bloody specification is rubbish. I mean, it doesn't say anything, does it? if we look this up can we do that Parnell 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 particle debugger is no longer for sale well well it is for sale We've got 154 in stock in Farnell. Instructions here for using other low cost Seamsys debuggers. No stock on ACC debug, they've got loads in the UK. Um, debugging Gen 3 devices. So on here, what? Oh, those are the headers. They only talk about using those two. But there's a 10 pin one there. Well, you can look at their software, see if it works. But they don't talk about this connector. They talk about using these side headers. Hmm. Slightly dubious. See, on here, they use this cable, but they don't talk anything, they don't even talk about that pin out. Oh, that's really mixed up. Um... 
So if we look on GitHub, Yeah, this isn't, um, there was one other thing. I mean, I, I'll send you the, the link for that. I mean, you can have a look. I don't know if that works, Western, but you might want to check it out. Um, there was one other. How to use an Arduino board as a DAP-Link device. So if they've got like an Arduino script that turns an Arduino into a DAP-Link. Maybe. If you've got a Sam D arm, sorry, Sam D Arduino board, maybe you can turn that into a DAP link. Possibly. I'll send this as well. We've got one of those kicking around. Maybe you can concoct something using the information there. Check it out. Have a look through that, Western. Maybe a hacky way of doing it. There was something else as well. Um, let me see. I wonder if this makes a link. There is a... Somebody worked on a probe that ran native... Um, native embedded rust. They could only make a few because they couldn't get hold of the... Um, microcontrollers that were required the STMs but I believe they've now started work on a version um, for the Pico say not Pico. Ooh, um, um Morphe twenty forty. Yeah. 
there we go what they talk about here which is really interesting the template is intended as a starting point to develop your own firmware based on the RP2040 how includes da -da 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 -da. but then it says this a mention somewhere you can use Jailing can have a pros will not work with probe run. You can use a second Pico as a SeamSys DAP debug probe by installing the following firmware to it. So if you've got a Pico, this is another way of um, I'll send you this link. Dapper mime. Yeah, this is a good resource set. I mean they're primarily talking about programming using the RP2040 as a target but there's also been some code written ported from STM32 originally that turns a RP2040 or a Pico board which is the low-cost RP2040 board that you get from Raspberry Pi turning that into a DAP link. So what they're talking about here is yeah this was a project HS probe they're actually designing a probe based around the RP2040 as well it says how you can use the ST link version 2 clone that link so there's plenty of possibly hacky ways of doing it I wonder what the status of HS probe is this is originally, it was based on a um, uh, STM32, but he couldn't get hold of the parts. He made so many, and then he decided to move to something that was more available. So he figured he'd redesign it based around the 2040. I say he, I don't actually know who it is. It's a bunch of people, but this guy I think was in charge. Emil Fresk. Um, the open source hardware pro for serial wire debug and JTAG protocol it utilizes the 32 STM32 F723. The firmware is available here. Da -da -da -da. And that was the original one based on the STM32. But there is a version of this that is based around the Pico. Maybe it's a different branch. Version 2. So under version 2, does it change this? It still talks about 723. USB Max, ULPI, docs updated. Must be version 2. Hold on. So if we look here, keycard libs, schematic V1, 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 V1. Two years ago. Ten months ago. HS Probe. I wonder if I've already downloaded this. Um, hold on.
I don't think I have. Let me um, see if I can check this out. Probably. This is interesting. Let me see if I can open it in KeyCAD. I'm intrigued to see whether the latest version of this, isn't it? So, do I need to look at version two? Git branch, oops, CD HS Pro Git branch. Say, is it? What do I do? Check out V2, is it? Oh, I do check out uh, V2.0. Switch to the 2.0 branch. Let me just have a look. Uh, open project. Let me see if I can find this. HS Probe. I think long term there will be a lot more choices, but right now we're a bit limited. HS Probe, KeyCAD project. Have a look at the schematic. Oh, I think this is based on the um, STM32. Origin Master. That's what I want. Maybe it's different. Origin Master. Open project. It looks the same. Oh, this schematic was made using older symbol libraries, which may break the schematic. Okay. Um, that's still got STM32. Damn. So where did I get this from? Um, hold on. Hold your horses. Let me just have a look. I wonder if these forked it into another project. Bear with me. I'm determined to work it out. I know there's a different... HS Pro Backups. What? Docs, keycat libs. Schematic one point four two. No, those are STM thirty two based. Right. Um, okay, I don't know. Let me
If I look at um, firmware, Board support, hold on. Source. You aren't. So that's definitely the STM version. Mouse staging SWJ Pendant. Okay. Um. This is kind of strange. Probe RS, cargo flash. Mm. Right, I don't know. I'm missing something somewhere. There is definitely an RP2040 version somewhere. I wonder if there's any forks. How do you see forks fork five? No, I don't want to fork it, you donk. I want to see the forks. How do you get to see the forks? It's not helpful. Well, it's not a problem, Western. I don't mind working with this a little bit because it's a problem that we've got generally. Other people are going to ask this. And finding solutions to it is, um, you know, important. Um, okay, let me go the other way. So on here it's H. When they say DAP link. You can use Daplink firmware. What is this written in?
It's written, written in C. It's an embed one. See, that's not what I'm looking for. No. So you can use a center picker as you double download this file. What is that? Dapper Mime. Can I just take a look at that? What's Dapper Mime? Dapper Mime. This unearths the name of a weekend project that I did in 2014. But now it's a port of arms seems this DAP code to a platform. The original code used STs, STM32 USB drivers, a new iteration uses tiny USB. We'll try, that's all C based. So none of this is what I'm thinking of. What if I search for this? HS probe RP twenty forty. does not really am I I'm starting to think that I might have um dreamt it oh rusty probe Maybe um, this is it. It's the same guy. It's called something totally different. The Rusty Probe. This is an open hardware probe for serial wire debug JTAG protocol based on the RP2040. Languages MATLAB. I don't think so. What? Math, order, keycad libs. Let me see if I can. I might see if I can check this out in a sec. Hold on. There's no firmware on here. Hold on, let me just check this one out. A bit confused about this. I think this was what I was looking for, but clone. Rusty probe. Let's open it. Open project. Rusty probe. Rusty probe. Hmm. 
So yes, this is the one I was thinking of. I think it's the same guy. It is the same guy that did the Pro Bar S. Yeah, I'm all frisk. Um, and if you look at this, hold on, let me just... You can see this is based on the 2040. So this one is what he Emil was working on instead of the old STM32 one. Um, So this this should support um, SWO as well, which it does. SWO TDO. I don't know if this will support DAP link or not. So if I just go back to this, what does it say? This is an open source hardware pro for serial wire debug, SWD and JTAG protocol based on the RP2040 MCU. The firmware here, the firmware is available here and it's open source. Here, there's no link, which is strange. 10 pin Cortex debug connector is used. Um, did I give you guys a link? I should have included this. So, there you go. Um, the program connector is the tag connector TC2030. Uh, castellated wires at the end. USB C connector supports up to 5 volt on the target. Or well, it supports 1.8 volt as well. So it's got level shifters in. Schematically found in the schematic area, yeah cable assembly. The RS Pro package sold on our shop contains two 10 wire ribbon cables. <laughs> it's not set up. <laughs> Anyhow, that is the one and that's based on the RP2040. But there's no link to any firmware, it says here. I wonder if there's a different version of this. No, it's just master. So he's obviously done the schematic. I think he's done the PCB. Let's have a look. Yeah, the PCB's done. Ish, I don't know if it's finished. Um, there. But I don't know where the firmware is. Obviously, order the PCB for it. Um, 
but I can't see any um, firmware. I wonder if he's got that in another repository. I think we already looked through here, didn't we? Lusty probe, that's the one. I wonder if it's in this repository. I don't know. I don't think there's a version, a branch of this staging. WJ pins. That all seems to be STM based. Don't know. Um, one for the future, maybe, to keep an eye on. But that will be good because the RP2040s are available. So if you can get a rust version of their. Um, the thing they did for the STM32 that would um, that would be good. So there's a few options to look at there, Western Long. Can't think of much else to help at this point in time, but there's a few avenues to chase down. Be interesting to see if this probe that I've ordered was any good. Um, whether that will be able to be used or not. <clears throat> Any other questions whilst I'm here? Anything else we need to cover? I know we've gone on a bit of a squirrel with debugging, but it's useful. And this one's definitely worth watching. <laughs> I wonder if he has his own um, repository. Pico probe and DAP RS. Yes, 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 he does. PIO RS as well. Um, Pico probe, let's have a look in here. This firmware implements a SeamSys DAP version 1 and version 2 compatible probe on the RPI Pico. So, yeah, he'd probably use the same software more or less. This one doesn't support. Um, SWO though. Yeah, look, on his to-do list, add support for SWO. It's 
So this is the start of that software. This is obviously going to be the firmware for the 2040 version. Interesting. Very interesting. Right, that's that. Um, anything else we need to cover? Any questions? Um, Laurie, there's uh, a lot to do when you get to back to working on Black Crab. Yeah, I will do. I'm going to get the hardware out of the way first and then I'll be straight back in there. Um, the only other thing that I thought I'd mention today, actually, is I want to start making boards available to the general public. But what I want to do is probably, my idea is really to do a early access. Maybe do it as a kit, like the developer kit, I don't know. But an early access where I make a certain number of them up ready for sale. I don't know if you've got any thoughts on that, folks. I appreciate your feedback on it. Um, Laurie says, one thing we will need is a Bitstream Flash for turnkey devices like mobile robots. Yep, we will. Um, that means I've got to get the Flash part of Black Crab working as well. Um, I might get Reed on the QSpy working before that. I don't know. How to prioritize those two. But yeah, what do you think, folks? So if I do a, you know, make available a small quantity for general purpose rather than developer users, but maybe early access users, um, I don't know, maybe make 10 available or something like that. Um, in a couple of weeks time what's the best way of doing that do you think i'd appreciate your thoughts um seems too small a quantity to go with something like a group gets so i need to organize it slightly differently i don't want to make a huge number of them but enough just maybe make 10 or something like that um just to get the ball rolling, to get some early users in as well. I reckon I can probably get put 10 together in a relatively short period of time. Um, oh, one thing I might need to do before I send your board out, Western Long, is um, one thing I don't have in there is one of these. Oh, I've done with it. I wanted to send you at least one blade for now. So tomorrow morning, if I've got time, maybe before I send it out, is make a couple of these LED blades up. One for you and one for iPost. They're actually a pain in the ass to make because. Um, The stencil, because they're so small, it's difficult to use a stencil with them. And the component's a bit too small to just solder on with uh, by hand. So let me see how I get on tomorrow with that. But I'd like you to have at least one blade, of course. Might be useful, even if it's just LEDs. And now, ouch. Laurie, one thing we will need is a bitstream flash return key devices. Oh no, I've already read that. Oh, Western Long said sweet. Yeah. I figured having at least one blade might be nice. So I'll see if I've got time to make that before I send the boards out tomorrow. Because it would be nice to have at least one, albeit a very simple blade, right? 
Um, I'll also, if I remember, send you a bit of this to go with your seven seg. I'll cut a few bits out because those are cool. Um, I presume you've got all the cabling you need. You don't need anything from me. I assume you've got a USB C cable. Uh, I think that's it, really. I think I've covered all the things that I need to cover. My final. It's filing your tiles earlier. Shaving a little bit off them. To find some nuts. Let me put some nuts on these. I still remember. What is my problem? I don't know if these nuts are... the right size. And these ones are M3s. I don't think they're going to fit on the bottom here. No, those are M3s. I don't remember what I did with lorry. What did I give you to put on the bottom of your tile standoffs, Nori, to secure the bottom? Don't think it was one of these. I don't think these are very long enough. I don't think they've got a long enough thread. No, those won't. Fit on. That's annoying. Well, I might have given you one some spaces, perhaps. Uh, Laurie said, I found the LED blade useful for debugging. Yours was already made up. Yeah, but I can't remember what I put on the bottom. I'll show you what I mean. Hold on. So if you look at the board now, can you see we've got screws in the top. And then if you look on the edge, you've got the standoffs which poke through and there's a washer there as well, which I put on. But if you look at the bottom, there's nothing on the screws. They're just bare. So the tiles can fall off. They won't just fall off because they're quite secure. But I think I screwed something on these for you, Laurie, didn't I? Maybe it was these. These extra spaces I've got. I don't know if these are the right ones. I've got loads of M3, but not M2.5s. Was it these? These look quite long. Laurie, is that what you had on yours? Can you see that long one in the corner? It looks remarkably long when you screw it on. See, these have got nothing on, and I've screwed one on that corner. Makes it stand quite a long way off. What did I put on yours, Laurie? Looks like five mil on yours. Hold on, let me measure this one. Because I've got a, I haven't got much in the way of choice. This one's about 
six mil, I think. Laurie, could it be six mil? There or thereabouts. Maybe even seven. It looked ginormous. Did I just did I just give you four or six or what? See, I've got nuts here, but they're all M3, I think. Be sure these are M3s. Just having a look in my general nuts and bolts. Um, box or oh, small ones I mean I've got these shorter ones but unfortunately the uh, threads on the inside aren't long enough it over the screws these ones so if you put those on they don't go far enough onto the screw itself they don't go tight up to the board there's a gap can you see the little short ones standoffs they don't screw all the way down and they're about as long anyhow once you take into account the standoff part Eight on mine, Norrie says. Well, maybe they're the same ones. They're a bit big. I don't know if it's worth sending those or not. What you really want is just some nuts, not standoffs. But I don't think I've got any 2.5 nuts. Yeah, those are M3. Loads of M3 stuff, but not much in the way of um, 2.5s. I've ordered some stuff on uh, Ali, which are like f more, which are gnarled nuts that screw on that you can more easily grip they have a knurled sort of thing and they're not quite as long I can send those up on the update packs oh, damn it. I've put an M3 on there and it won't come off stupid I'm a bit short on fittings and fast um, fitting Fasteners and fittings. I've got loads of M3 stuff, but very little M2.5, which is what the um, what we have here. What are these? These are really small. Where did those come from? One. Two. Oh, and you'll have to uh, ignore a few of the solder splashes and things that are on these boards. Um, but they all work perfectly. Just slightly cosmetic. Those are M3s. Damn it. What are these? Oh, are these M2s? These might be M2s. I might have found some nuts, guys. That would be better. Found a little bag of what I think may be 2.5 M2.5s nuts. I'm having real problems opening bags today. 
Not a good bag day. Try putting one of these on. Because if these fit, these will be much better. Yay! Perfect. I'll use these. A bit bigger than those big standoffs. I do to for now. I mean the tiles tend to stay on anyhow, but it's best to have you know have these things secured. I mean, I'd love to be working on the black crab stuff right now, but I have to get this hardware done, unfortunately. Get this PCB order. Because we'll have to wait, you know, a week or two for that stuff to come. So that's really a priority. And then in the interim period, I can work on black crab. And also build some boards up for the early access units for the first customers. If anyone knows anyone that wants to buy an early access unit, let me know. We don't have to be that technical or anything. It's not like being on the developer side, but it's... I need to be keen, if you see what I mean. Because the software will be, you know, early days. There you go. Can you see what I put on there now? Come on, focus your bugger. There you go. Just nuts. And that holds everything together nicely. Cool. Western Long. Uh, regarding making more boards, did you have any thoughts about finding a shop in Europe? Yeah, I was going to go with um, uh, Electrons, but I haven't set up the account and stuff yet. I need to do that. Are you familiar with them, Western Long? They're quite new. Just counting out eye posts, nuts. Well, not for nuts, it <laughs> that sounds wrong. Oh, my goodness! Let me give you um, electrons, electrons, these guys. They're like a tindy for Europe. Electrons, Le electron, electrons. These guys. I've just got to set my account up on there. And they handle all the European customs and tax and stuff. So um, you get the proper, what do they call it, OOS number or OSS number and stuff, and then you can. Um, you can put that on the shipping parcel so that you don't have to pay customs. I.e. it's paid, tax paid on the site, supported. Which is good for European um, stuff. Yeah. 
Oh, she'll come on out of the door now. I find it. Just booted it across the room, I think. Might be stuck in my shoe, of course. There's a way. in my shoe because it's got holes in the bottom. I sometimes get stuff stuck in the holes. <laughs> I don't know what I've done with it. Just drop something on the floor, a screw or a nut or something. Right. West Long says not familiar, we'll we'll give it a check. Yeah they're kind of like Tindy for Europe only they're doing a lot better and it's much more actively developed and the guys are really good that are doing it or the guy it's Greek guy and he makes his own hardware as well so you know it's kind of cool so he knows what people want and other people are already um, selling on there and I've been looking at it for some time I've just got to get round to um, actually setting up the account and then my first product to go on there will be Black Ice NXT obviously The latest on there. A Truru sells quite a lot on there. Solder Party is these boards that he makes. But yeah, so that's where I'm gonna list it first for Europe. Right, uh, any other questions or anything? If not, I'm gonna, we're almost at 10 o'clock, so I'm gonna call it, call it for this evening. Um, as I said, I'll get these, I'll get yours off tomorrow, Western Long. Um, but I'm gonna see if I've got time in the morning to knock up a quick LED blade, because they are, it's kind of nice to have something that goes in one of the blade sockets. Looking forward to it, says Western Long. Cool. Coolio. Right. Okie dokes. Well, uh, I'll be down on Discord um, if there's anything else. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to stream again. Depends. This week my head's down getting this hardware finished for the PCB order. That's my priority and then move back to the software and stuff. Right, so in the meantime, ciao everyone. Thank you for joining me. Um, and I'll speak to you all very soon.